Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm here at Ashwood and Holmes here in Cerritos, California. I'm about eight miles from Disneyland, about five or three miles from Knott's Berry Farm. But on August 31st, 1986, this was a veritable hell on Earth when a DC-9 crashed into this very neighborhood. They're still going through, searching for bodies all morning. They have been bringing bodies, parts of bodies. It, it's a gruesome thing to observe and a certainly gruesome thing to talk about. I'll tell you all about it on this episode. It's August 31st, 1986. Pilots of two aircraft don't know it, but they are set on a collision course that will take the lives of 82 people in the skies and on the ground in Southern California. Aeromexico Flight 498 was a scheduled commercial flight from Mexico City, Mexico to Los Angeles, including several intermediate stops. On board were six crew members. 10 of the passengers were children. 36 of the passengers were American citizens and 20 were Mexican citizens, 11 of whom lived in the United States. One passenger was a Salvadoran citizen living in New York. A mid-air collision took place over Cerritos. The crash was blamed on a pilot of a small plane, a Piper, 53-year-old William Kramer, who had his wife Kathleen and daughter Carolyn aboard. The three were looking forward to a relaxing evening in Big Bear. Their small plane took off at 11.40 a.m. from Torrance en route to Big Bear. Kramer had 231 flight hours and had moved to Southern California from Spokane, Washington. At about 11.46 a.m., Flight 498 began its descent into Los Angeles International Airport. Air Mexico 498, reduce speed to 210. 210, 498. Flight 5225, the traffic is now, okay, so turn left heading 230, the traffic's at 11 o'clock in a mile. Unfortunately, Kramer entered the Los Angeles Terminal Control Area airspace without clearance. The air traffic controller was distracted by another unauthorized private flight that had entered the TCA directly north of the airfield, which also did not have clearance. Number 66, Romy, you at 4,500 now? Uh, I think it everywhere at 3,400. Okay, you're right in the middle of the TCA, sir. Number 66, Romy, I would suggest in the future you know, look at your TCA chart. We just had an aircraft pass right off your left above you at 5,000, and we've run a lot of jets through there right at 3,500. The planes were between 6,000 and 7,000 feet high when they collided just minutes later, at 11.52 a.m. The Piper's engine collided with the left horizontal stabilizer of the DC-9, shearing off the top of the Piper's cockpit and decapitating Kramer and both of his passengers. The Piper began dropping onto an empty playfield at Cerritos Elementary School. Meanwhile, with all of its horizontal stabilizer and most of its vertical stabilizer sheared off, the jet inverted and entered a dive. It came down into this residential neighborhood at Holmes Avenue and Riva Circle in Cerritos, first hitting the backyard of a home, exploding on impact, and then sliding in a southeastern direction. The airliner destroyed at least 10 houses and damaged 20 more. All 67 aboard both aircraft were killed and 15 on the ground. Eight persons on the ground sustained minor injuries. One resident burned to death trying to save his home by fighting the fierce flames with a garden hose. The front part of the fuselage of the Aeromexico jet tore through houses and eventually punched through a concrete sound wall and came to rest on the sidewalk on Carmenita Avenue. Now the way that I understand it is the Aerojet plane and the small plane crashed up there. The plane ended up coming down here in this neighborhood in an inverted fashion and I'm going to take you over here to the front of this house it says it's not a through street here. Right past the sound wall is 13426 Ashwood Place. And it was in this either front yard of the house or the backyard where the Aerojet plane first made contact with the ground. Of course, this house is completely rebuilt since then. And then the plane ended up sliding in a southwesterly direction, taking out the house behind it and going through Home, Holmes Avenue over there. And I will try to point out to you exactly which houses were hit. I 
it's a beautiful day here in Southern California. But on that day, it was a horrific scene here for sure. The plane continued in this direction right here. Took out this house and slid right through here. Took out those houses over there. The houses you see across the street were all destroyed by the flames and the crash. And slid right across the street here into this direction. Killing the Estrada family. I understand there was a gentleman who was killed uh, fighting the flames since he tried to put it, the fire out there on his house with a garden hose. Probably not the smartest thing to do at the time. This house was completely destroyed. It's obviously uh, rebuilt from that time. Another sobering thing that I found out is this house over here. This house right here, where the two roofs meet together. It was here at the time. It stood witness to the crash. And there are pictures of emergency workers on the roof there, collecting body parts of somebody who had been completely uh, obliterated in the crash. It's crazy to think. Back in 1986, this was the scene of one of the most horrific air crashes in American history. I gotta tell you, it feels really strange being here. Knowing that this is where it happened. And today, there's virtually no evidence that this is what happened here. Now I'm here on Carmenita Way, or Carmenita Boulevard, and the front end of the Aero Mexico plane ended up crashing right through the sound wall. And then these houses right here have been rebuilt. They were the ones that were destroyed in the fire. But the plane ended up coming to rest through the sound wall right here. All kinds of debris scattered through this neighborhood right here on this street. Incredible carnage that lasted in the memories of those who had to deal with it. The emergency workers, it's just a horrific crash. Much like the PSA crash years prior. It was an eerie experience walking along the Carmenita sound wall which stood witness to the horrible tragedy 36 years prior. There is nothing on this spot today to indicate the carnage that took place here, not even a plaque. However, although I'm fairly certain that the sidewalk of 1986 was replaced since the crash, I was able to pinpoint where the plane punctured through the wall, scattering debris and shattered bodies into the road. Oddly though, the newer sidewalk has a noticeable crack marking the exact location where the plane punched through the wall. Now the unfortunate part of this whole saga is 67 individuals on that plane were just obliterated. I don't have to, I don't have to tell you what the scene looked like with body parts strewn all over the neighborhood. Now, of course, if you were an emergency worker who had to be here that day working, pick up body parts and such, something like that is something that changes your life forever. 
Among the Aeromexico passengers killed were Dr. Donald Wong and sons Jason and Stefan. The three had enjoyed time together in Mexico on a father-son deep-sea fishing trip and were on their way back home to Southern California when the plane went down. Come over here to Cerritos Elementary School to show you exactly where the other plane, the, where the Piper went down. Yeah, I'm taking you out here because this is where the Kramer's Piper ended up landing out here in this field. After the mid-air collision, the top of the Piper was cut right off, so I don't have to tell you where the Kramers died. I believe it was out here on this baseball diamond. actually ended up taking the plane out by picking it up and taking it to a hangar to, to be looked over. Very sad incident but that was very unnecessary. Mr. Kramer entered airspace without proper uh, authorization and of course the DC Knight didn't know it. They didn't even know they were at the same altitude and the fact that they had such a narrow window of opportunity to hit each other it's really amazing if you think about a mid-air collision even happening with there being so many miles above us and um, planes being relatively small. It, it's just, just amazing that you could have a mid-air collision like that. The bodies of William and Kathleen Kramer and their 26-year-old daughter Carolyn were taken to their native Washington state to be buried with family. All three were laid to rest at the St. Gall Cemetery in Colton, Washington. So what we're going to do right now is go over to Cerrito City Hall and check out the memorial that was placed there for the victims. What happened here that day? So we drove a short distance away from the crash site over here to City Hall. Right next door is a sculpture garden and that monument behind me is in tribute to those who lost their lives in the horrible plane crash here. Over here on the larger stone, the white stone. You see that it talks about in memory of those who perished from the DC-9 Aeromexico Flight 498 and the Piper Cherokee Archer 2, Cerritos Air Disaster of August 31st, 1986, and it has all the names at the very bottom right there you see the Kramer's names. Over here on the shorter monument it says in loving memory of our Cerritos families and friends who perished in the Cerritos air crash August 31st, 1986. Now these names right here are significant, the Estradas. A resident here on the ground named Teresa Estrada was returning home from a grocery store and she saw a fireball just blow right through her neighborhood. She could not believe what she was seeing. She was actually witnessing the death of her husband, Frank, and her children, Javier, 16, and Angelica, 14. She was awarded $868,000 in economic damages, $4.7 million in non-economic damages, and $1 million for the negligent infliction of emotional distress of watching her family perish in the house fire that resulted when the plane barreled right through her house. I'm pretty happy to see that they memorialized the victims of the air crash because we did a video on the air crash that was in San Diego and they haven't actually created a memorial. They they have a plaque somewhere at the uh, Air and Space Museum in San Diego, but they don't have anything like this that memorializes the victims of that air crash. The memorial to the victims is the centerpiece of the Cerrito Sculpture Gardens, created in 2006 as a 50-year anniversary gift to the community. 
Infinity by artist Cliff Garden is a sophisticated stainless steel art piece that appears to change formation from different viewing angles. The element sculpture seen here represents the four elements of nature, earth, wind, fire, and water, as embodied by female figures. She's got gold, that's fire. This is very cool to see. It's a replica of the very statue that is now on top of the US Capitol in Washington, DC. This is uh, two of three that were made by Michael Maiden. And right there it says E Pluribus Unum, out of many one. That's very cool. Among the most delightful of sculptures is Join the Parade by Jane Rankin and is an ensemble of eight bronze children in a makeshift marching band using kitchen utensils and cooking vessels as instruments. Kid in a wheelchair with a tambourine. I'm not sure what this kid's doing. Look at this little girl here. This red sculpture here is called the Joker and has an obvious resemblance to a court jester. The abstract sculpture of the Mirage was inspired by a desert mirage where a distant mountain range appeared to float in the sky. Creating a horizon and diffusing it with the mirrored stainless orb, which is split in half, the artist achieved the illusion of a floating landscape. So I do want to thank you for watching this sobering episode of History Hunters. You know, sometimes that uh, videos like this are not pleasant, but it's almost a reminder of how far we've come with air traffic safety. Things that were permitted in the 1980s are not permitted today, and that's all good for us who fly. But I wanna thank you so much. If you could leave us a comment, we would appreciate that as well. Also give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to History Hunters, we would love to have you join this growing family of those who love history. Thank you so much.